Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jill DeWitt with Jack Butala here. Hi, hi, Welcome we to our, our show. <laughs> In this episode, Jack and I talk about Offers Academy for Mobile Homes. Hmm, who knew this worked for all these property types? Great show today. Happy that it's Friday. I'm sure you are also, Jack. So, but first, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landacademy.com free online community. Awesome. Curia, is that how you spell Perfect. that word? Perfect, you awesome. did it. Yeah. Curia asks, this is our first mailer, so we haven't completed our first deal yet. We are picking an easy one uh, for that first deal, but I have a question about some of the others. Several people in West Texas owe about $450 on a five acre property. I offered 500 bucks and they replied and they'd be glad to take 500 uh, if you pay off the taxes, or uh, I'm sorry, if I pay uh, off the fees or the taxes, yes. The property would cost me about a thousand bucks. So that's a no go. My question is, do I politely tell them no deal or do I counter with say a thousand or a hundred dollars and I'll pay your fees or even quote unquote, the best I can do is pay the fees and take it off your hands, end quote. This is, you are so qualified I know. for this, to answer this question. I'm glad we reversed our roles today. This is fun. You know, I like the latter. I do I like both. The last, you know, I would do the last one. You know, or I and I would do. I'm I'm a fan of. Hey, you know, I'll take it off your hands. I'll give you a hundred bucks. You guys can go have a nice dinner. And I really have had people that said, "You're right. I'm a, we're going to go out and have a nice dinner and just say, okay, it's over with. It's done. I got something for it. You know. And I think they like that too. When there's money coming to them and they're doing the signing, there's a little there's a little something that they're going to get out of it and yeah. it makes them feel good. So I agree. I'm, and I'm with you, Kiria, and you're a hundred percent right. There's sometimes that when you sit, gosh, and you do the math, and this is one of the funny things I love about the people that think that there's nothing but gold in these back tax situations, because sometimes the back tax situations negates the deal. And you know, there's more taxes owed than what it's worth. There's a reason why they stopped paying and why they're about to walk away. And they really want to get something out of you because they know. And then you have, you have to do your homework, extra homework, to catch up and figure out, oh, it is not a good deal. Well, that was a waste of my time. Yeah, it was. So um, you did the right thing. I'm glad you did your homework and you know where they stand on the taxes. So I would, yeah, if they're still good properties and you're still interested, but then, but don't negotiate. I'd say, look, here's the best I can do. I mean, it's a good property. I'll give you a hundred bucks and I'll take care of everything else. And I can have a notary to you on Tuesday. And if they you have any hesitation, they're not into it, whatever, walk away. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, my answer is very close to Jill's and, and be, especially because you're brand new. If you've been doing this for five years, uh, really the question you'd be asking is, or, or you already would have developed, you will have developed uh, a good system for this, but the least amount of talking the, is the best. So if you have to go negotiate and talk about taxes, and then now you're looking up every single property, and, and it's not going to be four fifty per property every single one. It's going to be four seventy two and four thirty two, and now you got to contact the county and write a check. And see, this is not what this is all about. The, this is about m- you be making it so easy on yourself that it's silly. So this is a lot of work. Am I saying you should do the deal? I think you really should because you're brand new and and you found you, you did everything right. Uh, so, but I, at, at this point, would I do these deals? Probably not. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, good point. Yeah. So, but good great point. work. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, the system's working for, you it know? is, you are correct. If you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either of us at landacademy.com. Today's show offers Academy for mobile homes. This is yeah. the meat of the show. <laughs> Isn't this great? Jack, take you know, it away. If you haven't, uh, hey, listener, if you haven't uh, heard any other episodes this week, they're all center around one concept, making offers, writing offers, and sticking them in the mail, unsolicited, based on good data for people who own assets. It only works, in my opinion, 
if you have a good database set or a good data set to uh, behind you to make it work. So um, mobile homes, like any any other asset types, we, we've covered several asset types today, com- uh, this week, commercial real estate, um, single family residences. We always talk about land and we talked about a little bit of how to use a, the program to get listings if you're a real estate agent. Mobile homes is no different. It's a five step process. Get access to the data or the tools. In this case, the, the tools are two, it's a two part scenario. You get access to a database and then secure a mechanism to send out uh, bulk mail very, very efficiently and very economically, uh, inexpensively. So there's that. It's number two, qualify a buyer. Do you want to go send a bunch of mail out to a ton of people who own offers out to a ton of people who own mobile homes just to see what happens? Or do you want to know that you're going to do a deal and buy mobile homes to people uh, specifically who are in the business of flipping them or uh, uh, in some way they benefit from uh, purchasing mobile homes? They're already in that business. You're just providing a, a good straight deal flow for them. Acquisition flow. Number three. What is number three, Jill? Clarify the asset criteria. Yeah. So now you've got this buyer, right? And he says something like this, or she. I own 13 mobile home parks in Maricopa County, Arizona. It's actually a real conversation that I had. And I've decided that rather than, because I need to fill them up, rather than uh, putting a notice in the paper or advertising in a magazine or putting notices up at the hospital uh, because they're close to a hospital and then having people go through the expense and the time and the effort to move their own mobile home onto the onto our lot and connect it I would rather that I purchase a a ton of mobile homes regardless of quality for about five thousand dollars each and then rent them out so they can it's a turnkey situation I want to kind of create an apartment building deal Can you please find 350 mobile homes for me? That's the kind of conversation you want to have. You qualified that. Now you qualified the asset. The buyer's qualified and the asset's qualified. And away you go. You send everybody who owns a mobile home uh, that fits his acquisition or her acquisition criteria perfectly and you send them an offer. Number four. That is number four. Send offers to the, to the, the owners. And then number five is get the deal done. So mobile, how does mobile homes d- differentiate? Or how's I'm just going to ask you. Yeah, can you clarify when you're me when you when you're discussing which asset? Because there's a mobile home, the physical asset, the building, the structure that has wheels on it, or, and there's also the mobile home parks where yeah. they rest and they lease out the space indefinitely. So, right. will you please clarify for us, Jack? Yeah, sure. I mean, this works for purchasing mobile home parks. Also, we talked about commercial real estate yesterday. I think it was yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday. yesterday. And yeah, so, it, you know, you can send our letters out all over the country. People who own mobile home parks. And uh, if you have a buyer in your back pocket, if they're in that business and they have identified the area as somewhere they want to buy mobile home parks, it works. Mm-hmm. This is actually for mobile homes. You know, and I've done both and it works with both. Mm-hmm. It's a different database. So the mobile home parks, that's a real property. You can use the, uh, the asset set or the tool set that we have now, RealQuest. For mobile homes, you need access, the national access to the DMV, which we are just about completed, done completing. It, it is not available yet to the public, but we're, we're close. Thank Does that you. answer it? Yeah, that's exactly one. I want to clarify which one we're yeah. talking about to make. The one with the wheels. The one with the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> The, the one with the, the one with the avocado green refrigerator yes. and wheels. <laughs> Isn't that a picture? And linoleum. You know what's funny is that <laughs> see, trailers get such a bad rap, and I don't know why. I love trailer Isn't parks. That funny, and now, I think it's cheap as heck to live there. Well, I mean, you could call a mobile home a tiny house. Yeah. everyone. You know what? It's it it's the same thing, by the way, but they have a whole different spin on it. If, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say I'm going to visit my grandmother in her tiny house. Everybody goes, oh, oh that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Or my grandma lives in a mobile home. Mobile home, I go, oh, that's My not grandma cool. lives in a trailer.com. Yeah. I mean, what's the, when you really think about it, everyone, it's not any different. <laughs> it, they both have wheels and they hook up to things or they're self contained, you know, and, and all that. Jill and I went and looked at a mobile home park in, uh, that's close to where we live in Southern California. It's right on the ocean. It's gorgeous. And uh, we got in there and, and there's properties for sale with ocean view for less than $200,000. 
yeah. and about the same square footage as you know a, a, a house, a smaller house. If you purchase a house in the same area in the immediate neighborhood, it would cost you what two or three million bucks right on the water like that. Mm-hmm. And the, you want to spend two hundred thousand or two or three million, right? <laughs> exactly. So you know, if you're keeping up with the Joneses kind of person, go spend your two or three million bucks. But I think Jill and I are going to be, you know. <laughs> We're okay. If we had that make that decision, we would be right in that. I would, <laughs> I can tell you what our family would do, uh-huh. and it wouldn't be a long discussion. Exactly, because <laughs> I don't have any pride. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, <laughs> what? No, I don't have any useless pride. Let's put it that way. Okay, wait, what's that trying say to say about me? I don't. I'm not trying uh, to impress anybody. All right. right. <laughs> I prefer to say you make very sound decisions, financial decisions. Right, How is that? I have no pride. I'll take it. <laughs> I have no useless pride. I have no pride, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Friday. I walk around looking like this every day. I have no pride, Jack. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> There's like a bunch of derogatory stuff I could say. Yeah. It's so... <laughs> Wait a minute. And like, and all I could think of is, where, where do I fit in here no. then? What does it say about me? Because I have a lot of pride. Thank you very much. Well, it's different okay. for women. Okay. Women should have a little bit. A little bit? Men should not walk around beating their chest, you know. you. We've all met guys who have a little too much pride. Oh, my goodness. That's really what I mean. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. You got to have the bigger sports car, better, faster sports car than everybody in the whole thing. Right. Even though no one knows that I've leased everything and I can't possibly <laughs> yeah. qualify for another dollar, but I look good. We have a... Yeah, that's crazy. There's a certain section of Scottsdale, Arizona that is famous for what I call uh, being famous for housing $30,000 a year millionaires. That's what I call them. Yeah. And I'll let you guess which area that is, north, south, or center. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I almost want to say, is it grown up now? Is it a $50,000 millionaire? Yeah, you got to have a little 60, more now. I don't think I don't you can know. do it on 30. Yeah. I think now you're a 50,000, 50, 60,000 dollar millionaire. Yep. $3,000 suits and a fake Rolex and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you leased it all. <laughs> exactly. So how is mobile homes, you know, how would you approach this? Um, differently so I, I talked about how you qualify the buyer differently maybe that's a situation like that maybe you have uh, you know maybe you put a posting in Craigslist to find a couple of buyer and user buyers that want a certain type of mobile home that's a certain age and things like that so maybe it's a dealer just like we do with cars you find a, a mobile home dealer that says I can't keep this mo- make this model of mobile home at, that's this age I can't keep it on my lot we sell it we sell it the first day if I had 50 of those so then so you, you narrow your search down to that. So it's it's very, 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 how does it differ? It's extremely similar. There's a few caveats on when you change asset types like this that you wanna pre-think out. So it's very expensive to move a mobile home, to remove it from its spot and then put it somewhere else. Uh, in a lot of cases, in fact, I'm thinking in the deals that I've done, every case, the moving expense is more than my pay for the actual mobile exactly. home. Exactly. Because we scraped the bottom on this. I'll send, we'll send letters out for $500. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing with boats because they're paying a monthly fee, so they're already real motivated to get the thing up, just to get it out of their life. In fact, they probably pay you to just stop to have to stop paying the rent, the yeah. pad rent. All of these assets are things that people they when they're done with them, they're done, and they just want out. And they often don't know they can't they they can't they don't know that they can't not pay and just let it go back somewhere that's right that someone's going to step in and just take it over whether it's the county whether it's um your slip your boat slip you know all of those things they'll take the asset back so and somebody will use it and so people keep paying and they're pretty excited to to not have to pay some are some are tied to your credit score too mobile home rent mobile home pad rent is you, at it's, if it's a larger owned park company owned park is probably that's tied to your to your credit score, like in a, a renting an apartment would, That's a good point. would be. Well, how about a foreclosure? That might do something to your yeah, credit score. Yeah, right. I mean, there's so, a lot of things that I think that's where it comes from. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's something we haven't mentioned. We only send out mail to lien-free assets, like cars that have no, uh, that, are, that are not owned, and right. mobile homes in this case. They no, are owned, you mean? They're not. I mean, they're not. Not bank-owned. Yes, not bank-owned not yeah. bank and not, um, there's no debt on it. Yeah. 
that's because everybody gets gets an, that's a that's an interesting thing that people don't think about. You're not negotiating with a bank. Good luck. You want to go against Citibank on this? No, I'm not going to go up with Citibank, but I am going to talk to Mama, and Mr. And Mrs. Smith. That's right. Before it goes to Citibank or whoever it is, because now because they can make a decision. So to finish that thought, uh, you know, there's each of these assets have different caveats, and one is that you want to befriend a mobile home mover, guy that owns a company and has the tools and stuff to do that and really negotiate, pre-negotiate a huge discount rate so that you make that as, as cheap as possible, um, that's gonna allow you to find a buyer a lot easier and a, and a seller a lot easier. So uh, the more things that you could add on to make it make that person sign that offer when they get it in the mail, the better. Like we'll, we'll move it for free, let's say. So you in, and build that in the cost of, of the deal. Right, so where you're leasing the spot, it's not gonna come after you at some point. We'll get it out of there for you. And then doing these deals, doing it. The number five is get the deal done. Um, buying a mobile home is maybe the, it's like buying a car. Mm-hmm. It's maybe the easiest thing there ever was. Yeah, cars are sometimes harder than land, which is so yeah. funny. So yeah, right. it's really it's not hard. Yep. Then then in the process, you're going to get to know the mobile home park operator or owner or everything else, and just deal leads to deals leads to deals. Join us in another episode where Jack and I discuss how to use information. That's Jack. (laughs) An inspiration, that's Jill. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your commercial, mobile, listing, land, (laughs) real estate, everything ambition. I love it. That was was kind of fun that way. I do. I think we should do that more often. I do too. We always say that and we don't, but I love it. It's good. I like when you're the MC. Thank you. It's kind of fun. Now I realize, you know, sometimes it's almost even easier having a script. I'm just kind of going along. Not that it's a, you know, real big script, but having an, an outline like that versus I'm always having to be on my toes. Yep. <laughs> it's fun asking the questions and, and setting it up and letting, you know, putting you in the hot seat. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great weekend, Joe. You too. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We We are are Jack and Jill, and and this was was the Cash Flow from from Land Land Show. Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.